the derivative of the sine and cosine functions. So in this video, we will present what is the derivative of the sine and cosine functions. And not only that, we will also prove why or how the derivative of the sine function came to be that way. Derivative of the function f of x is equal to sine of x. If f of x is equal to sine of x, then f prime of x is equal to cosine of x. And another way of writing the derivative, d over dx of sine of x is equal to cosine of x. And we will prove this. We will prove this using our uh, limit definition of the derivative. But we will need the following identities. The sine sum of angle identity. You met this in pre-calculus when you studied circular functions and the fundamental identities. What is the sine of the sum of two angles? Well, sine of alpha plus beta is equal to sine of alpha times cosine of beta plus cosine of alpha times sine of beta. We will also need this in our proof. We saw this when we studied limits, and in particular, indeterminate forms. The limit of 1 minus cosine of x all over x as x approaches 0 is 0. This one falls under indeterminate forms because if you were to do the direct substitution, as x approaches 0, cosine of 0 is or approaches 1. And so you will have here 1 minus 1 divided by 0, and that is 0 over 0. That is an indeterminate form, but we were able to show that actually the limit of this function as x approaches 0 is 0. We will also need this, the limit of sine of x divided by x as x approaches 0 is equal to 1. So this is the proof. So we shall use the limit definition and in particular we will divide our proof into three parts and that correspond to our steps, step 1, step 2, and step 3. So this is the limit definition of the derivative. f prime of x is equal to the limit of f of x plus delta x minus f of x all over delta x as delta x approaches 0. So this function here, this is nothing but your change in y, okay? This is nothing but your change in y over change in x, okay? y as delta x approaches 0. And you know what change in y over change in x stands for? It stands for the slope. And that is what the derivative is all about. It's about the slope of the tangent line. It's about rate of change. And in particular, it is about the instantaneous rate of change. So using our limit definition of the derivative, if f of x is equal to sine of x, f prime of x or the derivative of sine of x is equal to the limit of sine of x plus delta x minus sine of x all over delta x as delta x approaches 0. Sine of x plus delta x minus sine of x is equal to sine of x times cosine of delta x plus cosine of x times sine of delta x minus sine of x. Now, where did that come from? So, sine of x plus delta x is equal to this. Look at this. And that came from our sine sum of angle identity. I am going to rearrange these terms, okay? I will bring minus sine of x here, okay? And we have this now. Sine of x is a common factor. I'm going to factor it out, okay? So this is step one. This is the result of step one. 
we now go to step 2. And in step 2, we will divide the results of step 1 by delta x. I will separate this into two fractions. So, this is justified by this. If you have a fraction such as a plus b all over c, you can write it as a over c plus b over c. And that is what we did here. So, this is actually already the result of step 2. We will now go to step 3 and we will get the limit. The limit of this function as delta x approaches 0. So we will get the limit of this function, the function that is the result of step 2 as delta x approaches 0. Well, applying the properties of limits, we can, we can get the limit of these expressions of these functions, okay? This just directly follows from the properties of limits. So we shall get this. What is the limit of this? Sine of x times cosine of delta x minus 1 all over delta x as delta x approaches 0. And what is the limit of cosine of x times sine of delta x all over delta x as delta x approaches 0? Well, the limit of these two functions is equal to this. Sine of x times 0 plus cosine of x times 1. Okay? And that is equal to cosine of x. This is equal to 0. And this is equal to cosine of x. Now, where did that come from? Why did this become 0? Well, pay attention to this. So, sine of x does not contain delta x. So, we will not touch it. It will remain as it is, sine of x. But look at this. What is the limit of this as delta x approaches 0? So we can factor out negative 1. And so that will become 1 minus cosine of delta x over delta x. Okay? And the limit of that as delta x okay, approaches 0 is equal to 0. This is the result of our theorem in limits. This falls under indeterminate forms, but we were able to discover that the limit of this function is actually equal to zero. Now, how about the second term? What is the limit of cosine of x times sine of delta x all over delta x as delta x approaches zero? Again, we will not touch this. There is no delta x here, so it will remain as cosine of x. But what is the limit of sine of delta x over delta x as delta x approaches 0? Well, that is equal to 1. Again, one of the theorems that we showed in the topic under limit. So that means the derivative of sine of x with respect to x is equal to cosine of x. If f of x is equal to sine of x, then f prime of x is equal to cosine of x. Now, by now, I hope that you are the sort of students who, who get satisfaction when you are able to prove a theorem. And so, I will not take away that satisfaction from you. You will prove that the derivative of cosine of x is equal to negative sine of x.